Hi everyone, so today I just want to respond to one individual, an individual called Julian Burnside. For those of you who don't know who he is, he's essentially a far-left refugee advocate, which just means he's a far-left open borderist who wants us to take in anyone who turns up here by boat saying, I'm a refugee, he wants to let them in, and he wants taxpayers to fund them. So let's just get into what he's been saying, shall we? Promoting his documentary, Border Politics, which shows him travelling around the world investigating Western countries' treatment of refugees and features commentary of from former Human Rights Commissioner Gillian Triggs. Well now, Gillian Triggs, the famous feminist who decided to take people to court for pretty much anything that offended her. Gillian Triggs, who works for the Human Rights Commission, a known far-left organisation that pushes far-left dogmatic politics on people and drags people before it for simply saying things that the left doesn't like. So that's Gillian Triggs. That gives you an idea of what this documentary is going to be all about. Mr. Burnside said his overarching point was that refugees who ended up in Australia are human beings and should be treated properly. Hmm. What does he actually mean by being treated properly, you reckon? What he really means is they should just be let in and we should pay them welfare. Ultimately, that's what he means. By treated properly, he doesn't mean just, oh, there you go, you've got safety, go and make your own way. He actually means use taxpayer money, house them, feed them, just let them in whether they're fleeing danger or not. We are, you know, the no lovely, nice people who don't believe in borders because left-wing politics or whatever. He says... It's ultimately, I think, a question of what sort of people we are. There you go, straight to the character assassination, straight to the, if you don't take in border people, and these boat people, I should say, then you're a bad person. Look at me, I'm Julian Burnside. I want to open the borders and let everyone in. I'm a good person. It's just rubbish character assassination against his political opponents, and it's very, very typical of Julian Burnside and his fellow leftist compatriots. We get... A very tiny number of boat people turning up in Australia until we started pushing them off to Manus Island and Nauru. And the question is, well, if someone falls at your feet asking for help, do you kick them in the head or do you treat them decently? Well, that actually depends on a lot of things. A lot of the situation depends on, you know, who is the person knocking at the door? Are they actually fleeing danger? What is it that they actually want? Do they just want protection or do they want us to support them as well? So he's trying to make it a simplified situation here, when really it's a lot more complicated than that. And ultimately, we as a, as a nation, and any nation, gets to decide who comes to our country and who doesn't. What he wants is to just say, well, if you're going to seek asylum, if you say you'll seek fleeing danger, then we should let you in, just because you say that you're fleeing danger. It's just an absolute load of rubbish. She goes on and tries to expand on this argument later on, but it's easily refuted and we'll get to it later. But moving on. He also says, I think what I took away from it is that compared to other Western countries, Australia is probably doing it worse than anyone else. And the country that struck me as doing it best was Jordan, which has not even signed the Refugee Convention, but they seem to be honouring the spirit of it in a way that we aren't. Well... Maybe that's because people are actually fleeing war from it by going to Jordan. Like, there's actually war in the area. They're actually refugees who just want to be safe. And they're fleeing to a country that's very, very close. Not like the situation here, where people are fleeing their country for whatever reason. You know, they, maybe they're genuine refugees, maybe they just want to leave for economic purposes, whatever. And instead of going to the next available port, like the next safest port, they're going and finding somewhere safe and then looking further for a Western nation that will pay them welfare. None of the boat people that left Indonesia were fleeing any kind of war. They weren't fleeing any kind of danger. They were actually perfectly safe in Indonesia. And they decided to come here because it was a better life for them here and we pay them welfare. Jordan has very challenging geography with Israel on the west and Iraq on the east and Syria on the north. Depending on what's happening in world politics, they get a lot of people simply walking across the border asking for help. And when I was there, they had a million Syrian refugees living in the community, allowed to work, people who've simply walked into Jordan saying, please help us. And of course, it's part of the Middle East spirit of hospitality that you don't turn people away when they come like that. 
Again, like I mentioned before, these people are actually fleeing danger. And as he mentions, they want to work. They're not, they're not there to get welfare. They're there just because they want to be safe. This is what a genuine refugee does. There might be people who are just mooching off the system and all that kind of thing there, but they're Muslims going to a Muslim country and living in a Muslim way. So they're very similar culturally, they're similar ethnically, and they're just basically going from this country and then walking across the border to, an, border to another country. It's a completely different situation, and he's trying to conflate the two because he's a propagandist, essentially. Anyway, now compare that with Australia's position. In Australia, I think the largest number of boat people who ever arrived in Australia was 25,000 in one year, and yet our response to them was one of unrestrained hostility and aggression. It's quite astonishing. Yet here we are, one of the biggest takers of refugees on a per capita basis in the world. And he has a go at us because 25,000 is the most we've had in one year. We take a lot of refugees for the size of the country that we are. We take a lot. And here's the thing. We take them from all around the world. These are people who aren't fleeing immediate danger. They've already gone somewhere to register for re refugee status and we are now taking them. In a lot of cases. This is what we do. We're taking them from all around the world. These aren't people on our border going across the border saying, we're getting attacked and persecuted over here. Please take us. You're next door. We need just somewhere that's safe and will work and contribute. This is people picking countries. They're all around the world and they're saying, we want to go to Australia. Let's go to Australia. And they either make their way here and try and come here by boat, as they did under the Labor government when they changed the laws, or they apply for refugee status and they get allocated to our nation and we for some reason decide to just take them in people from all around the world that may or may not be able to fit in with Australian culture. Asked whether Australia had a different view of sovereignty to countries with land borders given our island status, Mr Burnside said that had been the pitch politically. The notions of sovereignty were injected largely by politicians. I don't think the average man in the street in Australia wanders around thinking about sovereignty, he said. But do they think about Border security. How about the nation? How about keeping people away that might not fit in culturally? I think you might find Australians think about that quite a lot, especially given the amount of migration coming here these days. This is just typical arrogance from a far leftist saying, oh, well, they don't think about these concepts of sovereignty, therefore we can dismiss it. No, they might not think about specifically sovereignty, that word, but they certainly think about things associated with sovereignty, things like who do we let into the country, what laws govern our country, who sets the laws of our country. And that means if someone comes here by boat just randomly and then says, oh, I'm fleeing danger, I'm fleeing danger, we have the right to say, no, if you're fleeing danger, you can go and wait in the queue and we'll come and get you. And also, there's actually no war over there in Indonesia where you came from, therefore you're not actually fleeing danger, so we have the right to send them back. That is our right. That is our right as a nation. And here is Julian Burnside saying, oh, well, most people don't care about sovereignty, therefore we should probably dismiss it. It's just ridiculous, just far left rubbish. In fact, the interesting thing is that if you wander around people and speak to ordinary people, whatever their initial view about boat people is, once they meet a refugee, they are willing to treat them as human beings. It's really, really interesting to see that. A lot of people who are hostile to refugees in Australia have never actually met one. Because that's the thing, it's not about the individuals. It's about these people trying to come across illegally. They might be lovely people. They might be horrible people. There are plenty of refugees that have come and just haven't fit in and ultimately become destructing, uh, destructing influences on Australian society. There are plenty of refugees like that. A lot of the refugees have actually been charged with terrorism offences. There are plenty of refugees that that has happened to. And not to mention the fact that so many of these refugees are on welfare. How many of these so-called nice, lovely refugees that he's discussing are getting taxpayer handouts? Because as we know, a very, very large percentage of refugees are still on welfare handouts many years after they arrive in the country. That tells you something. 
that tells you that a lot of these people are basically incapable of fitting into Australian society. And really, we should be looking to maybe send them back or at least cutting off the welfare and forcing them to integrate by getting jobs and, and integrating and assimilating with wider society. But because they are given this welfare, they might seem really, really nice in some cases, but they are still a net drain on our society, our nation as a whole. Therefore, it is something that we need to talk about. So yeah, look, they might be nice individually, but that doesn't mean we should just let them all in willy-nilly because they claim to be fleeing danger at one point. It's just not, that's not how it works. We can't do that. It's not practical in the long term. Mr Burnside said he was disappointed that attitudes towards refugees in Europe were hardening as the scale of people trying to cross the continent's borders grew. Well, fancy that. He's upset that people in Europe suddenly don't want mass immigration. Wow, what a shock. And he said he was disappointed with the attitudes of Europeans at having their own populations replaced by outsiders. This tells you, again, the mindset of these elite far-left Muppets. He doesn't care that they're essentially getting invaded. In his mind, it's, oh, they're all refugees and we've got to be really, really nice to these people because they're fleeing danger. Ah, who cares about the consequences for the people that are forced, essentially, against their will to take them in and pay for them? Julian Burnside does not understand the issue. Or, or if he does, he is truly malevolent. Mr Burnside considered that part of the change in attitudes in Europe had been caused by the fact that economic migrants as well as refugees had been trying to move there. He said, I don't know what the actual numbers are, but yes, I believe that part of the shift in attitudes has been because they're not just helping people who are fleeing persecution, they're helping people who are simply moving on and I can understand that attitude. Well, would you look at that? He actually understands why people are pissed off. What he doesn't admit is that the vast majority of these refugees all around the world, that's pretty much what they're doing. And if you disagree with that, if you don't believe that, see what happens if you cut off the welfare for them. See what would happen. Say, you cannot have any access to any welfare, any public health care. If you come here, you are on your own. If you break the law, we'll kick you home. See what would happen if they did that. It would... <laughs> You'd find so many of these refugees would just say, oh, don't worry about it, we'll just go somewhere else. Guarantee it. Absolutely guarantee it. Famously, notoriously, at the end of 2001, John Howard went to the polls under the mantra, we will decide who comes to this country in the circumstances in which they come. Now, if that's an expression of migration policy, it's impeccable. If it's an expression on refugee policy, it's completely wrong. And I think that Europeans understand that distinction fairly well. Actually, no... It's a really impeccable refugee policy as well because we will decide who comes here. And this is the thing. Julian Burnside is essentially saying, oh, you can have your borders, but all they have to do is say, oh, we're fleeing persecution and they, they have to let you in. These evil Westerners have to let you in because you said that you're fleeing danger. This is the argument that he's making. It's completely wrong. It's completely rubbish. We will decide who comes here, whether they're a refugee, whether they want to get a job, no matter what. We decide who comes here. And the fact that he would want to take that away from us, take that away from the Australian people, says a lot about him and, and his attitude towards the West. Okay, so next up he sets up a really wonderful example, which is typical of the emotional manipulator that is Julian Burnside and the general far left. Now, if I can illustrate that with the domestic instance, I can say, I will decide who comes to my house and the circumstances in which they come, and that would be fair enough. And if I'm sick of having visitors and I say, I don't want any visitors until Thursday week, that would also be fair enough. A little unfriendly, but it's fair enough. Now, what happens if the next morning a little kid comes to the door and says, please help me, there's a man with a knife chasing me. I could say, come back on the w Thursday week. I'd be within my rights to do that, but it would be unthinkable. What you do is you bring her in, sit her down, check her story, and if she's telling the truth, protect her, and if she's not telling the truth, send her away and send her back home. That's actually not how you treat that situation, Julian. It really isn't. If, if a, a little girl comes to your door and says, I'm being chased by a man with a big knife, you look out, you see, okay, there's no man with a big knife. Okay, well, I better bring her inside and we'll call the police and we'll find out where her parents are and we'll send her back home. That would be how that situation works out. So it's a terrible example and it's made even worse by the fact that it's not little girls turning up on our shore. It's 
pretty much grown men of working age coming here for our welfare benefits. Yeah, look, there's some families, but mostly it's grown men of working age. Same in Europe, same pretty much anywhere these refugees are running around. Maybe not in Jordan, I haven't actually checked there. That might be actually where the women and children are, so the genuine refugees are there. But generally, coming to Australia, it seems to be a lot of working age men, and same for Europe. And as we already know, lots of these men end up being on welfare for long periods of time. So rather than having a girl come up say, please help me, please help me, please help me. It's a man coming up and saying, I'm fleeing danger, I'm fleeing danger. Let me in, let me in. Now what would you do if in the middle of the night, a grown man came up to your door, knocked on your door, he you know, didn't look like you, didn't speak your language very well and said, I need help. I need help right now. Please leave me in help. Please give me help. And, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to take him in? You're going to take him in? Okay, maybe you take him in, but then what are you going to do? Are you going to feed them for the next 10 years? Give them a house? Give them one of your rooms? This is essentially what Julian Burnside wants. It's not about giving help because they come here and they live on our welfare. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing as helping a child in need. Do you know how many people, if a man came up to their door in the middle of the night and said, I really need help, I really, really need help, please help me. If I open the door and that man doesn't look like he's actually in genuine danger, in most cases they're just going to say, close the door, piss off, go ask the police for help. Unless they can see actual genuine danger happening, they're more likely than not to turn them away, especially in Australia. Because we don't have guns, so we can't defend ourselves against strangers, you see. It presents a little bit of a problem. So Julian Burnside, classic sophist trick here, saying, oh, think of the children. Why would someone think of the children? But completely misrepresents the situation here. He finishes up with exactly what you'd expect from a far-left activist like Julian Burnside who doesn't actually like his own country and just wants to let absolutely everyone in. The way we treat our refugees, if only people knew, if only Australians generally knew the way refugees, boat people are being treated in Australia, they'd be horrified, Julian said. Oh, what, you mean by giving them food and shelter and, you know, giving them somewhere to live while we process their application? Oh no, it's not in Australia. How could we? I bet he would be saying, well, you know what, some refugees actually get hurt, they don't like it over there. And then you see what happens when a refugee actually goes and hurt themselves, like the refugee that recently jumped off a bus and killed himself. What did the left do? Oh, it's the government's fault. It was the government's fault that that refugee hurt himself. Oh, if only they had processed them in Australia and let them walk through the general community without actually checking their credentials. Instead of sending them offshore, they would have been so, so, so much better. It's actually a complete load of rubbish. We treat them perfectly fine. A lot of the problems created are actually refugees creating their own problems by rebelling and, and going against the rules and all that kind of thing. These are people that have already tried to enter Australia illegally. They can't then complain about being detained offshore. You broke our law. Deal with it. We spend vast amounts of money making their lives miserable, and all of this is explicitly as a deterrent so they will not come looking for protection from persecution. Which is interesting considering none of these boat people were actually fleeing immediate danger. They were all fleeing Indonesia, which I'm sure he'll say, well, Indonesia haven't signed the UN protocol, but he already mentioned that Jordan hadn't signed it either, and they seem to be doing fine with refugees. So the idea that Indonesia haven't signed any UN protocol means that we should be obliged to take all these refugees that are already there is complete and utter rubbish. We are not obliged to take these people. They were not fleeing any immediate danger. All that happened was they were waiting in Indonesia. The Kevin Rudd government changed the laws and lo and behold, they all started coming over here in boats and 1,200 of them drowned as well. So we have a right to control our borders. We have a right to decide who comes here. Maybe if there's a war in Indonesia or New Zealand and people are actually genuinely fleeing immediate danger, then perhaps maybe we have an obligation to take them. But while it's wars around the world or these refugees are already safe, we are not obliged to take anyone who just turns up here on our shores and says, hey, I'm not being treated well overseas. It's a, it's a danger. I know there's no evidence of that danger, but you have to take me and you have to give me welfare and you have to give me shelter just because if you don't, you're an intolerant racist bigot. 
Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed my video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my live streams. Link is in the description. And I'll see you when I see you.